Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the North Kesteven series. This is a large Lincolnshire district centred around the town of Sleaford. There's 75 parishes here, so let's take a look at one of them. Welcome back to North Kesteven, everybody. Now, if you think you recognise where I'm stood right here, you probably do if you watched last week's Colby episode. I'm standing at one of the entrances to the former perimeter track or runways here at RAF Colby Grange. And in last week's Colby episode, you might remember I said I'm going to start this one by talking about this airfield in a special section. Welcome to the parish of Boothby Grafo. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Continuing through North Kesteven, now we come to Boothby Grafo, the smallest of the cliff villages. It's situated approximately seven miles south of Lincoln on the A607. The village is very small, occupying a central position within its parish boundaries. Lots of land to the east of the parish is taken up by the former RAF Colby Grange, whilst to the west there's a castle. Boothby Grafo is mostly about farming. It's not uncommon to see plenty of farm vehicles in this place thanks to the vast amount of surrounding farmland. Even the former RAF base has returned to agricultural use. The village has no shop, school, post office or pub, but it does have a church which has a unique little story to tell involving a freak weather event. A name that crops up a few times here would be Overton and several of their number are buried in the churchyard. And speaking of names, how about this for a fun fact? Boothby Grafo is a name that some of you might already recognise if you're a fan of the Canadian band The Bare Naked Ladies. That's because the village shares its name with a comedian, singer and songwriter who has worked with the band. Although his name at birth was James Rogers, Grafo claims to be the only man in the world named after a Lincolnshire village. He was born in Hull, but his family live in Lincolnshire. I hope nobody ever names themselves after me, I'd be mortified. Let's go. Straddling the border between the parishes of Colby and Boothby Grafo, alongside the western edge of the A15, is the former RAF Colby Grange. It was opened in 1939 and operated as a fighter and night fighter airfield during World War II. At various times, it was occupied by UK, US, Canadian and Polish fighter squadrons. The station was initially used as a relief landing ground for the training facility at RAF Cranwell. In early 1940, two squadrons, numbers 253 and 264, took up residence here. The station was never to be upgraded with concrete or tarmac runways, and throughout its operational life it used three grass runways. Although it closed after the war, it was reopened in 1959 as a ballistic missile launch facility and placed on a high DEFCON 2 launch alert during the Cuban Missile Crisis. The station was finally decommissioned in 1963. Several lengths of its perimeter track remain, as does the original, now derelict, control tower. Okay, so here we are then in the main Boothby Grafo village. Now this is the smallest one that I'm planning to cover today, so I don't think it's going to take me all that long. When we've walked around the main village, I'm then heading out to the west, because down there there's a castle. We'll see. Let's go. Thank you. 
We begin on Main Street, Boothby Graffos Central Road, at a big building on the corner of Castle Hill. The parish notice board is on the wall. Tick off Boothby Graffo, everyone. There's 70 to go now in North Kesteven. This board tells you quite a bit about the village, including its elevation above sea level, 219 feet. There's also a map, and here I'm showing you my route around the place. It's a simple circular walk via Main Street and the A607. The map is not orientated correctly. We're heading south here, not west, and we're following this road to the church. Boothby Graffo is a village typical of this part of North Kesteven. Like Colby and Harmston, there are several stone cottages. So what about the peculiar name? What does Boothby Graffo mean? The explanation is quite simple, really. Booth means farm or settlement, which refers to a herdsman's temporary shelter, and Graffo means Grove Hill Spur. It shares its name with comedian James Rogers, the only man in the world to be named after a Lincolnshire village. And in much like in Colby and in Harmston, we've been on the Viking Way for most of that, as you can see, Viking Way. That's becoming the channel's favourite footpath, if it even has one. I guess it is the amount of times we've seen it. Now we're heading for the church via Boothby Graffo's small recreation field at the southernmost end of the village. Grade 2 listed, the Anglican parish church is dedicated to St Andrew. This was rebuilt in 1842 and we'll learn why in a moment. Here's the war memorial designed and made by Arthur Howson of Tentercroft Street in Lincoln. It was unveiled in 1921. There are several graves in the churchyard belonging to members of the Overton family, including these seen here. The church also has several memorials to the Marfleet family. They once occupied Boothby Hall to the north of the village. Now, according to the parish registers of Wellingore, Boothby Graffo's original church was destroyed in 1666 by a tornado. Termed a T89, the tornado was the strongest ever recorded in England. The church was rebuilt soon after. The replacement church was then torn down again in 1842 and replaced with the stone building we see here today. Okay, now we've left the churchyard and we're on the A607. Now this could be a boring bit because I don't think there's much along this main road here. But you know what? We haven't spoken about the A607, not yet, not really, not in the past few episodes. So this could be a good opportunity to do just that. The first thing we come to on the A607 is a bus stop. Like Waddington, Boothby Graffo is served by the number one bus. As well as buses, you're also likely to see combine harvesters along here, given the amount of surrounding farmland. The A607 runs parallel to the path of the Roman road, Ermine Street, now known as High Dyke. Here's what's nearby. We pass a paddock on the left next. All of the cliff villages seem to have at least one of these for some reason. And this was nothing to do with the village, but this plane took my interest as it was circling overhead. Now we've reached Blacksmith's Lane and the route is almost complete. The rest of the walk is just simply more housing. Of course, the one thing we can't access is Boothby Hall. It was built in 1867, a Victorian building in an Italianate style. Okay, we're almost back to the beginning, and I'm gonna show you here just how narrow some of the roads are in this part of North Kesteven. Have a look at this. Here you've got a removals van, Barnes of Lincoln, parked half on the curb, and you can see there's not much room between him and this wall on this side. I had to drive between these earlier to uh, get to my start point. There's not a lot of room, is there? That's how narrow it is in these uh, North Kesteven villages. Better just hop out of the way of this car because otherwise I might get flattened. And I've really only got one 
more thing to show you. I might as well keep the camera rolling. And it's this building right here, which has got this blue car parked outside it. I think this is an old chapel. It looks like an old chapel. Oh no, old school, old school in fact. It says old school on the wall. Okay, now we've come down the cliff to the uh, west of Boothby, Boothby Graffo village, easy for me to say. And we are now having a look, or trying to, at Somerton Castle. Now this is not gonna be the easiest thing to film. As you can see, it's there behind those trees. You can't see much of it. And this is a, a very narrow road. So I'm gonna to to be quick because I don't really wanna block this road for people coming down. Uh, but there's nowhere really to park. It's an awkward landmark to try and film, but it's there, as you can see, behind those trees. We'll see how close we can get. We'll see how much we can capture. Hopefully we can see enough of it for me to be uh, satisfied. This is the main entrance to Somerton Castle, a Grade 1 listed building on low-lying farmland out to the west of the village. This is located a long way from Boothby Graffo. I purposely left the Strava app running here so you can see exactly how far. Here I'm pointing out as best I can the top of the tower which you can just about make out above the tree line. Unfortunately, that's as much as you can see here as it's private property. That calls for special section number two. Although Somerton Castle is in the parish of Boothby Graffo, it's in the Manor of Waddington, and this portion is often referred to as the Manor of Somerton Castle. It was built by Anthony Beck, a former Bishop of Durham in 1281. He then gave it to King Edward II in 1309. King John II of France was imprisoned at this castle between 1359 and 1360, having been taken prisoner after the Battle of Poitiers. It continued as crown property until it was sold by Charles I in 1628. The castle that stands today isn't anything like the original. Between 1415 and 1478, it was allowed to fall into disrepair. A survey dated 1601 described it as being utterly defaced and fallen almost down to the ground only one of its original four towers still stands today. In 2010, due to deterioration, it was placed on the English Heritage Buildings at Risk Register. It's currently owned by Graham Porter after changing hands numerous times through the centuries. And that's been Boothby Graffo, folks. I do hope you've enjoyed this little adventure. It's time to drive up the cliff again to get to the next village in the series. Do join me there next week, because in that video we'll be seeing a cottage like no other you've ever seen before. And a lot more besides. See you later! Thanks for watching this video folks don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already it really makes a difference with youtube if you're new here subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it you can find all the links to my social media accounts below as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel also if you've enjoyed this episode have a look at some more videos in this series until next time i've been andy also known as the village idiot and i'm out <laughs>